A huge announcement today in the decades-long effort to harness nuclear fusion, the same process that powers the sun and the stars. And scientists say it could eventually provide unlimited clean energy for all of us here on Earth and possibly change the way we power our homes. Researchers at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California say that for the first time, they successfully produced more energy from a fusion reaction than was used to ignite it. While nuclear fission involves the splitting of atoms, scientists say that fusion works by pressing hydrogen atoms into each other with enough force that they combine and form helium, releasing enormous amounts of energy and heat. And unlike fission, it doesn't create radioactive waste. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm celebrated the team's historic achievement today as a massive win for our nation. We can use it to produce clean electricity, uh, transportation fuels, power, heavy industry, so much more. It would be like adding um, a power drill to our toolbox in building this clean energy economy. This is what it looks like for America to lead. And we're just getting started. Just getting started. Joining me now, Democratic Congressman from Virginia, Don Beyer, the founder of the Bipartisan Fusion Energy Caucus and member of the House Committee on Science, Space and Technology. Congressman, great to have you. It's funny because it's ironic, actually. My, my daughter is taking her science test today and we were going over fusion <laughs> and fission and what powers the sun. And I mean, so uh, it'll be exciting to talk about this when we all get home today. But let's just talk about this advancement uh, for a moment, if you don't mind and, and what it means for the future of clean energy and how it could help us mitigate the human impact on our climate. Well, first of all, Kira, tell your daughter you get an A plus for the explanation <laughs> that you gave, which is very, very good. <laughs> You know, that, you know, one of the big challenges we've had with energy is where does the energy come from? Whether it's coal or natural gas or wind or sun. But with fusion energy, it comes from water. And there is, uh, I think it says one cubic mile of seawater could power the entire world each year. So we're never going to run out. And you made the really great point that there's no radioactive waste, so we don't have to find a mountain to bury it in. You know, if a fusion reactor stops working, it just stops working. Um, there's no explosion, there's no radio act, radio, radiation. Uh, and what it could do, though, is uh, almost completely replace the fossil fuels. It gives us a clean energy source to take carbon out of the air. And then when you think that the poorer you are, the less money you have, the greater percentage of your net income is spent on energy. So you make energy sort of ubiquitous and very low cost, it'll lift a lot of people around the world out of poverty. All right, so fossil fuel and, and that industry, reality check here. What role exactly did the government play in this achievement? And does this technology, you think, face political hurdles like everything, right, from Washington uh, and also the fossil fuel industry? Yeah, although interestingly, the fossil fuel industry is now beginning to really invest in fusion because they see it uh, as their future. They're going to have to change. You know, I hope it's not ideological at all. You know, our, our caucus has got a lot of Republicans, a lot of Democrats. It's something we can all agree on. Um, and we're still, you know, eight to ten years away from getting it in the electrical grid. The breakthrough at Lawrence Livermore was incredibly exciting because we've shown that mankind can do it. You have to get these particles up to 100 million degrees centigrade and control them. Um, but soon, you know, by hoping by 2030, we'll be able to take old coal plants and old electrical plants and, and turn them into fusion plants, put that electricity into your home and mine. So let's talk about what makes clean energy from fusion different from, say, solar or wind power. A lot of people don't understand this stuff as well as you do, or maybe my daughter now who's studying it. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Solar and wind both come from the sun. Uh, the sun drives our wind, the sun obviously powers that. The difference is that when we use the energy of the sun, which is bashing a couple of hydrogen atoms together to form helium, um, then it throws off um, energy right then and there. And you know, we have an unlimited amount of hydrogen on this planet. Um, there are sophisticated companies. You asked a really good question, how much does the federal government have to do with it? Not a great deal. Um, there are 29 private sector companies that are each competing to see who can be the first and who can turn it into a, you know, a real manufacturing opportunity. And our job here on the Hill is to get the federal government to give just enough money to catalyze it, to help them solve their last engineering problems. 
So how long until we actually say, see a fusion power plant or the use of fusion energy in any way to just turn our lights on? Well, the most conservative pessimistic estimate is 2035. And the most optimistic says 2030. We'll have great nuclear power reactors around the country in three or four years, but it's a, yet another step to take them from a reactor to something that is powering the grid. But it, it's going to happen pretty fast. Well, it's exciting news, and so glad you could join us, Congressman. Uh, and by the way, we live in Virginia, so you should be pretty proud of the teachers that are uh, teaching all of this. I'll have an extra credit report turned in tomorrow in your honor. <laughs> and, and we wish your daughter a very good score on her science test. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.